Welcome to the first in our series of Marianne's Musical Soiree, where Marianne Kippura will be sharing his unique insights and reflections on the music you will be hearing. I am Jane Knox, and today's program is about mazurkas, Frederick Chopin's mazurkas. The mazurkas, dances in three-quarter time with special rhythms and accents, would become the most extensive of all of Frederick Chopin's genre. Chopin composed 58 of these wondrous concert pieces. Composed from the beginning of his life to the end of his life, the mazurkas would represent his most personal side. Publishers referred to them as Souvenir de la Pologne, and each of these gems would create the Polishness that we hear in his music. I am joined today by pianist Marian Kipura, and we will be hearing excerpts from his acclaimed Chopin CD, Images of a Homeland, particularly the Mazurkas. Thank you, Jane. We just heard the Opus 24, number one, Mazurka in G minor, composed in 1834-1835 time period. Remember that Chopin was born in 1810, left Poland at the young age of nearly 20, to seek career opportunities in major European capitals. He spent two years in Vienna and then settled in Paris in 1831 at age 21. Paris was the center of all things cultural, and Chopin, always elegant and reserved, was received into Parisian society straight away. He became a famous teacher, gave concerts, not too many. He didn't like performing a lot in public as such. And of course, he became the creator of great music. His ballades, scherzi, bolognese, waltzes, etudes, nocturnes, and others would forever be changed in the crucible of his inventiveness. But it was in his mazurkas, a dance form, which existed before Chopin's time, where Frederick Chopin maintained the connection to his homeland, his beloved Poland. We're now going to move to the next mazurka in the Opus 24 set, this time the Opus 24 number 2, in C major, composed at the same time. Thank you. 
We just had the Opus 24 number to Mazorka performed by Marianne Kipora. Surely we must talk about the rhythms and accents in the Mazorkas, the so-called dotted rhythms, which are highly stylized and vital to the form. Indeed, typically you have an eighth note which is dotted or separated by a rest, followed by a sixteenth note, and then the longer note like a quarter note. Well, let me make it simple. Yam, papam. That's the mazurka rhythm. Yam, papam. Now, accents can actually occur on any beat or on none of them in a bar. For those of you who are following the music, uh, if you'd like to look at Opus 6, number 2, bars 5 and 6, uh, you will see an accent on each of the three beats. So an accent can appear on none of the beats, on the first beat only, second beat, or third beat, or in this case, all three. was the Opus 6 number 2 mazurka performed by Marian Kipura. Now, whereas Chopin composed mazurkas earlier, it was his Opus 6 set of mazurkas composed in 1830, which were the first he chose to publish. Marian, it is difficult to choose a favourite amongst these 58 gems, but this next one comes awfully close to one of your very favourites. Why is that? <laughs> right, that's a very good question, Jane. I've known this next mazurka surely since childhood, but I became reacquainted with it in 1982 when I saw a television documentary on the noted conductor Leopold Stokowski, who was of Polish descent. The presenter, whom I will mention in a moment, decided to play something Polish, as he said, and sat down and performed this next mazurka. The pianist was none other than Leonard Bernstein. It was like an epiphany. I ran to the piano and learned it right away. I had to, and I've been playing it ever since. This piece composed around 1827 that would make Chopin 17 years old. Uh, it was one of Chopin's earliest works while still in his native Poland. It was published posthumously and listed as Opus 68, number two. 
It has such maturity in a relatively simply constructed work, but it's a masterpiece. When it came to mazurkas, remember for Chopin, it was about the Polish earth. We just heard the Opus 68 number two mazurka in A minor performed by Marian Kipora. Marian, there are three types or styles of mazurkas, I believe. Correct, indeed. There are three styles. Uh, you have the Kuyavyak, which is a somewhat slower uh, paced uh, work, like we just heard, the Opus 68 number two. The Mazur is another type, which is medium in tempo and pacing and the obedek, which is a faster, more thumping style. All of these mazurka styles existed before Chopin, but he raised them to levels of sophistication and elan never seen or heard, and they took Europe by storm. Uh, this next one is a quintessential example of a mazur, medium in pace. It's uh, notated as vivace, and it also happens to be one of his most famous of all the mazurkas, the celebrated Opus 7 Number 1 in B-flat, and I might add a favorite in the concert hall.
That was the Opus 7 number 1 in B flat, famous mazurka, in the style of a mazur. So we've heard a Kuyavyak in the, in the Opus 68 number 2 in A minor. We heard this now, the famous Opus 7 number 1. We will now move to an example of an obereg in this next one, also Opus 7, this time Opus 7 number 5. This is a faster, more thumping type style piece, if you will, also composed at the same period in 1830-1831. Was the Opus 7 number no. 5 Mazurka performed by Marian Kipora. Chopin's so called exile from Poland was due to two reasons not only his tubercular condition, but also political unrest. Incursions by Poland's unfriendly neighbors, especially Tsarist Russia, became an ever present way of life. This was an affront to Chopin as he grew concerned for those he had left behind his friends, his family. It weighed heavily on him. The mood changes here from the joyful Opus 7 number 1 we just heard to this more brooding Opus 7 number 3 in F minor, composed at the same time. You see here how Chopin's mood changed. These three mazurkas, Opus 7, there are five in all. I played three of them. They were composed at the same time, and how the mood changed. In 1836, Frederick Chopin met the famous author Aurore Dupin, who 
who took a man's name in order to sell her books. She became known as Georges Sand, a woman with whom he would spend the next 11 years of his life. It was around that time that Chopin composed this mazurka, the Opus 33, number 4, in B minor. Expansive and symphonic, it is stentorian in its grandeur. It also represents a larger form in the genre of the mazurka.
That was the Mazurka in B minor, Opus 33, Number 4, performed by Marian Kipora. This final Mazurka which you perform is an epic work, the great Opus 17, Number 4. More like a nocturnal fantasy, the accents are more implied than obvious. There is also chromaticism and dissonance, which anticipated modern modes of composition generations later. Most composer pianists were influenced by Chopin, including, for example, Debussy, Scriabin, Rachmaninoff, Grieg, and many others were influenced by Chopin's foresight. And this piece also, Jane, actually reminds me of a Polish term, zal, Z-A-L, zal. Roughly translated, it means smiling through tears. But for me, smiling is the operative term. And it also reminds me of a letter that Chopin wrote to a friend in a moment of loneliness. I go out most every night, he wrote, and I get back at 10 or 11, but never later than 12. Then I play the piano, read, stare, cry, laugh, get into bed, extinguish the candle, and dream about home.
That was Opus 17, Number 4 in A minor, performed by Marianne Kipora. Many thanks for listening to Chopin's Mazurkas, the first of our podcast series entitled Marianne's Musical Soiree. You can learn more about Marianne Kipora's musical activities at patriamusic.com.